With the high cost of diesel fuel, does it still make sense to buy a diesel truck? Or is it better to get a gas truck instead? They were not going to talk turkey. They weren't going to do any, any bargaining, nope. nothing. Nope, nothing. nope, nope, nope. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, these are actually crazy times right now. Um, with the gas prices the way they are, the diesel prices, <laughs> it's just a lot of craziness. Sharp-eyed viewers have noticed that we have a new truck. So in this video, we're going to talk about what it's like to buy a new truck and if it makes more sense to get gas versus a diesel truck. You can save a lot of money by, by getting a gas engine, but you're going to pay on the performance end. So if you don't know, we are full-time RVers. We've been on the road three and a half years. We have a Grand Design Solitude fifth wheel, a 310 GK, and we've been pulling it with what? A 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD. If you are truck shopping, be prepared for scarcity. It's just, it's not the way it used to be buying a truck. We were right on the line with our payload. We even upgraded our tires, but we had a three quarter ton and we wanted a one ton and we shopped for almost a year. Yeah, I mean, the pandemic happened and, and the inventory dried up and, and it was just impossible to find a truck on the lot. I do think that the inventory is starting to get better, but I think we're, there's still going to be probably a six month period of time and that's just just an estimate on my part but I'm thinking uh, it's going to be at least six more months before the dealers have vehicles on the ground and in that period the dealers have the upper hand and that was probably the most eye-opening thing for Paul and I is we went into a dealer to look at a brand new Denali so what we have is a GMC Sierra Denali and they were not going to talk turkey. They weren't going to do any, any bargaining, nope. nothing. Nope, nothing. nope, nope. They had a line of people. If we weren't going to buy it, next. You know, it was just, there was no way they were going to give us even $500 off. No, nope. they put some things on that I would, traditionally, I would never pay for. You know, the mop and glow <laughs> that they put on the trucks and, and charge it thousands of dollars for. And, they weren't going to come off of it. They, they were going to charge it. And if you wanted it, you pay it. If you don't, see ya. They could get away with it because they don't have as many apples to sell. So since they only have a few apples, they're just going to mark those apples up super high. They have way more customers than they have inventory. It was not really a pleasant experience realizing that we were going to be, you know, paying what we had to pay. No, it wasn't. And I think that's the market out there right now. I mean, you can tell us differently if you... If you've gone into a dealer and gotten a vehicle even at MSRP, then you've done really well. Well, the other thing too, and this is this is something I really think, particularly if you're a full-time RVer that makes you sit up and take notice, is that because of this chip shortage and part shortage and stuff has just gone on so long, the manufacturers are just shipping the, the trucks without everything on it. So if you want a truck with heated seats, that kind of thing, you may not get it. They are going to decontent. When we were talking to the dealer initially, they thought that the heated steering wheel that it is optioned with wasn't on the truck and that we would have to come back uh, for them to install it at a, at a later date. Same with heated seats. We were lucky that the one that we found actually has heated seats, but it was supposed to have heated back seats and they just took that off. Yeah, they're not there. If you are travelers like us, that could be a problem because they want you to go back to that original dealer to get that installed. If we had to return to the dealer for anything, it would be a major inconvenience because we're moving further away from the dealer. So let's talk about buying a gas truck versus a diesel truck. It used to be that a gallon of diesel was cheaper than a gallon of gas, so you had some savings there when you bought a diesel truck, and it's not like that at all right now. No, we just passed a gas station back there that was 609 for a gallon of diesel. And gas, regular gas is what, almost $5? Yeah. So it's about a dollar difference. And it just keeps going up. I mean, you all know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It, 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 the cost of diesel just keeps going up and up and up. And Now there is a way to save on diesel fuel. We use 
TSD open roads and we save up to a dollar a gallon. It's an app that you get that's linked to truck stops and we will put a link in the description of how you can sign up. So you'll save money with gas on maintenance too, like oil changes, right? Yeah, the uh, gasser uses, I think, six quarts of oil and we use 12. I can't remember the numbers anymore, but um, at least 10, maybe 12 quarts on, on, on an oil change on, on the Duramax. Right, and there's a huge difference in diesel parts, like alternators, water pumps, batteries are more expensive for diesel. Everything's more expensive. Well, we know people that are thinking of getting rid of their diesel truck and buying gas. So we kind of did a, did a dive into that and compared our truck. The gas version of our truck. Yes. So, you know, spoiler alert, we did get diesel. We had diesel before. We like diesel. So we did purchase diesel. And there are reasons why. And the biggest reason is what? The main thing is the torque that it produces versus the gas engine. It's almost double. So what we have is a 2022 GMC Sierra Denali. If we bought the gas version, now we have the crew cab, we have the standard box. If we bought the gas version, we have 464 pound-feet of torque. But we have the diesel version, we have 910 pound-feet of torque. Torque is what gives you the power when you're pulling. That was the biggest thing for us is because we know we're going to be pulling our rig up a mountain pass. And, you know, hands down, the diesel is the one that's going to be able to handle that. We're going to go over the uh, Continental Divide this year, and, and we did it with the, with the old truck, and that long grade up to Eisenhower Pass, I mean, we, had, we did have to slow down. It was a hot day. It was in the 90s, so we did have to slow down to 45 miles an hour. If we would have been in a gasser, uh, we would have been in the four ways on and probably doing 30 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. You have a 401 horsepower with gas versus 445 with diesel. We have a 10-speed transmission on diesel versus 6-speed. Six 6-speed six on, on the gas, yeah. Right. I don't know why they're not using, well, probably cost. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, the Allison 10-speed is only put behind the diesel right now. They, that may change in the future. Well, I think one of the biggest difference is GCWR. Now, whether on the gas side, whether it's a long bed, the standard bed, or a dually, you have 24,000 GCWR. And what is GCWR? Gross combined weight ratio. Rating. Rating, thank you, not rating. So that's the weight of everything. That's the weight of your truck and trailer, everything. 24,000 is the max. Now, on our diesel, it's 29,700, so we get 5,700 more pounds, right? Mm -hmm. If we had gone with a dually, that shoots up to 40,000 pounds. I mean, that is a huge difference. It's unbelievable how much difference a, an extra set of tires <laughs> it will give you. Probably a bigger axle. Yeah, I'm sure it's a bigger rear axle, yeah. You do get better fuel economy with a diesel and longevity is a huge huge one most people will say that at 10 years right at 10 years a diesel engine's barely broken in like 100,000 miles right a diesel engine's barely broken in the vehicle that we traded in on this was had 128 129,000 miles on it there was certainly nothing wrong with the internals of the motor i was beginning to worry about things like the turbo and the and the water pump and the and the starter and the alternator and you know, all the, all the stuff that's bolted onto the engine will start failing at some point. That's what I was concerned with. Well, here's the thing that a lot of people don't talk about. Although that engine would probably last another 100,000, 200,000 more miles or whatever, the interior was really starting to show its age. We had a split in the armrest. The seats were starting to look tired. You know, I mean, there was just a lot, you know, inside, like yeah. some things on the dash started to fall apart. So I yeah, it was showing its age. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it was what, nine years old. So yeah. And I know there's trucks out there that were, that are older and still very serviceable. Good on you if you've got one of those. Well, garage kept makes a difference too. I mean, yep. you know, ours was not garage kept. Oh, look what I found. Is that, <gasps> is that a banana? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, another thing though to think about is that diesel is going to have higher resale. If you drive your gas truck for 100,000 miles, you're not going to get a lot of money for it. 
you know, and because most people think, well, you know, it's not going to last a lot longer. Yeah, I wouldn't pay as much for a gasser than, as I would for a diesel with the same mileage on it. So if you're not going up mountain passes, you probably could get away with gas, particularly if your trailer's not that heavy. Sure. If you're going to stay in the flatlands, then, then uh, a gasser is probably going to be just fine. Well, we have friends who have a diesel who are actually looking for a gas truck to save money, and they have an Airstream that's not that heavy, so it may work out for them. Yeah. If they get the equivalent to, to this with a gasser, I mean, that 400 and whatever, what is 410 or 400? 400 Four, 464 pound-feet of torque. That would pull an Airstream just fine. So let us know if you're thinking about getting rid of your diesel and going to a gasser. And if the truck shortage has affected your shopping. Something I tried to avoid while making this video is to get into the controversy of Ford versus Chevy versus Ram. Well, we just went with the best. What? You can't say that. Oh my gosh.